I'm here today to talk to Nick Hazelhurst, the Chief Financial and Operating Officer from Money Corp and long-standing client of ours at Futurus. Thanks very much for being here today, Nick. Thanks, David. Pleasure to be here. We're based here in the UK, and as David said, we've been working together over the last couple of years to drive a huge transformation programme through our business. We are a 40-year-old organisation deeply rooted in the foreign exchange and international payment space. And as our industry has become more technology-led, we were trying to marry that deep understanding and experience with a real agile methodology. And really what we've done over the last couple of years is built the foundations for driving our business. As you know, we've done three acquisitions this year. We've opened uh, numerous new product enhancements with yourself. And really you've helped us set the seeds of how we're going to operate our business in the future. Were there specific goals and things that you set out to achieve at the beginning of this period? We needed you to help lead our technology team firstly, but also to a degree our culture of our business into a, a way of working that was in weeks and months, not quarters and years. And that was really our primary objective. At the zone we're in now where we're releasing new features for customers on a monthly basis, where we're launching new products in geographies on a monthly basis, is a world away from where we were a couple of years ago. When you start to look at those reports around where are customers getting stuck on their journey, what are the things that they're hovering on for more than a, a normal amount of time, that allows you to have this continuous feedback loop. So actually, we can work out that perhaps the way we've set the platform up isn't as optimal as possible, or perhaps the terminology is not as slick as it should be or as clear as it should be. So we've taken a lot of that continuous feedback, and because we're in this monthly sprint cycle, we've been able to pull things out from that analytics, you've got a lot more fluid uh, feedback about how customers are interacting with you. And I think that's really valuable. So you've made a lot of progress over the last two years in terms of how the business goes about developing products uh, more iteratively, uh, getting things to market quicker and adjusting to the changes that you mentioned uh, in the industry. The role that we've played has been to redesign and build the front end of your core uh, digital platforms for both private and corporate customers. It's been an extremely interesting and at times very, very challenging journey. Just keen to hear your reflections on, on the experience of, of the last two years and this specific project. Yeah, no, thank you. And I, and I think you use the word interesting generously, David. Mm. It's, been a, it's been an incredibly challenging journey we've been on. And I think that's you know, part of the reason actually why Money Corp exists, because the international banking network is so fragmented, communicates in such a poor way across border, that you need someone to come and build a bespoke platform to join that up. You know, consumers, whether they're logging on our app, on our online site to move money to China or to Brazil, don't need and want to understand all the plumbing that sits behind that. Your role has been to help us make the customer journey seamless and actually behind the scenes when you're plumbing into 25 banks around the world to make all of the magic happen, you know, to make that an efficient, scalable setup in the back end. So, you know, it's ironic what customers see in the front end represents what you helped us build, but 70% plus of the work actually happened in the plumbing and everything that sits behind that. And that's given us, I think, a platform that we can continue to enhance and scale. So I think your team have certainly enjoyed it. I suspect lots of people have learned a lot about uh, moving money around the world and foreign exchange and hedging products that they didn't understand we certainly invested heavily up front to make sure the teams were well set to work together and I'm a firm believer that that just doesn't happen by accident you've got to set the environment to make that happen we've got people who are quite often 5, 10, 15, 20 years in the financial services markets with all of that great experience but to actually have a group of people who come from a very different background a very different outlook challenging our thought process is what made the project strong Seems quite obvious, doesn't it? But bringing together people who specialise in technology implementation, specialise in product development with people with deep-seated experience in the financial services sector, uh, bringing those two together, it seems like that's been the key to success. It is, and, and lots of culture clashes in a way, you know, that we had to work through, you know. Um, and that can be simply from dress code to hours of working to in work environment to... Um, remote working versus office-based working, all of those little things which go to build each company's culture. Actually, how do you meld those two together? Because if you're going to be together for a year or two years, you've got to find a way that 
suits both organisations but doesn't break either organisation. I think we had a number of those conversations at the start over you know, what brand of coffee we should be having and uh, you know, what time of day people should be in the office. It, it, but it, I think we worked through it, but it didn't all happen by accident. We work in spaces like this that are kind of very open and, and not so corporate. Yes. And I think there is sometimes an uh, assumption from, uh, from companies like Futurist that we'll be able to create the same environment, the same culture, um, and be able to work in the same way um, when we work on site with clients. But of course, that's, that's not the case. So being mindful of the need to be adaptable. I think we both, we both learned from that, quite frankly. I mean, I think doing it again, dealing with some of those things right up front is probably important. You know, what are the, what are the most critical things to both organisations? What are the things that are sort of non-negotiable and how do we communicate that to the teams up front? Um, you know, we work in a very regulated environment. Many regulators are coming into our office and, you know, we, we can't have crates of beer stacked up in the corner. It just doesn't work. doesn't mean we don't want to do, do a lot of those team bonding things and have fun and have a more, more productive, relaxed environment, but there will be certain baselines for both organisations. And We come out of it actually stronger from learning around some of your cultural things and ways of working. I think we've become a bit less corporate in our environment, a bit more flexible for our general workforce, and some of those things are, are sort of brush-offs that we picked up from you along the way. The platforms that we've built are uh, uh, hugely significant for the company. Can you tell us a little bit about what they've enabled from a business perspective, uh, a kind of a growth perspective for MoneyCorp? Our business has been growing rapidly over the last four or five years. We need a platform that is sustainable to support that customer acquisition. It's got to be intuitive, it's got to be slick, it's got to be fast. Um, people expect to do their banking in an environment that's secure, uh, easily signposted and, and easy to navigate. So that, that was the first absolutely fundamental process. You know, we would like to get more of our uh, customers trading online and, and so the, the, the actual experience needs to be great. Secondly, we need a platform that is very easy to customise. We're in 15 or so geographies today with multiple languages, multiple regulatory uh, controls things that need to fit into local customs and practice and the platform needs to be able to adapt to that without it being a major rebuild, a major IT project. So whether that's going into Brazil and making sure the language is appropriate, whether that's sending payments to China and making sure we're capturing the right information to deliver onshore payments in China. We needed a platform that was more flexible to be customised for all of those scenarios because part of our growth story is you know, growing our business internationally. What advice would you give to other leaders in the financial services sector who are looking to take on a project that is as high stakes as the one that we've worked on together? Good question. I think you've got to make sure the entire organisation is ready for transformation. You know, this isn't an IT project. This is a business change that means the ways of your whole organisation interacting with your customers are going to be different. So I think it's important that is agreed up front at a senior level and cascaded around the organisation. So that's about ambition level, communication, managing expectations in terms of how these things that's might right. change, how their roles might change. That's right. And then I think the engagement in the actual project with the business owners being very specific about what you're building for their customer sets, making sure you've had a high level of engagement with their teams to make sure those um, requirements are gathered clearly. And there's nothing more expensive than building something and finding out you've not got it quite right and having to rework it. So that high level of engagement with the business owners is for me then the next step, making sure they're brought along that journey, get the chance to input, sign off and, in, and involvement in whatever those requirements are. Then I think from a financial service perspective, you've got to, you've got to ensure your regulatory and compliance teams are fully engaged as well. You know, for other people in financial service, you know, you'll be aware that the level of regulation is only growing every year. This year we've had three new regulatory uh, developments in the UK with PSD2, MIFID2 and GDPR. The landscape is similar in other countries and only continues to grow. So, you know, as much as your business guys and your product teams would like to build things, get your compliance team again involved early on in the process because there will be nuances and technicalities that only those experts can really help you explore and understand. 
Would you advocate having uh, your regulation and compliance teams involved actually in the product development conversations Definitely. that you're having? Definitely, I think so, because they can help you be creative when you want to find different ways of servicing clients that aren't completely obvious. They can also stop you going down rabbit holes where you know, you just, there's no way that would be acceptable to the regulator. Um, so I think that as, as early as possible you can get them involved in that product conversation, um, the better. Well, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to Nick for sharing some time with us this afternoon and giving us your take on uh, the last couple of years at Money Corp. Brilliant. Absolute pleasure, David.